Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus was teaching in a synagogue on the Sabbath, and a woman was there who for 18 years had been crippled by a spirit. She was bent over, completely incapable of standing erect. When Jesus saw her, he called to her and said, Woman, you are set free of your infirmity. He laid hands on her, and she had once stood up straight and glorified God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant that Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, said to the crowd in reply, There are six days when work should be done. Come on those days to be cured, not on the Sabbath day. The Lord said to him in reply, Hypocrites, does not each one of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his ass from the manger and lead it out for watering? This daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound for 18 years now, ought she not to have been set free on the Sabbath day from this bondage? When he said this, all his adversaries were humiliated, and the whole crowd rejoiced at all the splendid deeds done by him. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> Today's Gospel passage, we learn about the Sabbath day. Ask yourself a question. You don't need to say the answer out loud. Why does God ask us to rest on the Sabbath day? Think about that for a second. What was the purpose of that? Is there something wrong with work? Why does God ask us to rest? It's an important question. And it's something that, apparently, some of the Pharisees and Sadducees didn't seem to understand. The leader of the synagogue was angry at Jesus because he committed a work on the Sabbath day. In some sense, he was missing the forest for the trees. He didn't, he didn't understand what the meaning of the Sabbath day was. We're called to rest on the Sabbath day not because rest is good in itself or because there's something wrong with work. We're called to rest because even though work is a good thing, it can become a distraction from our relationship with God. Maybe instead of calling the Sabbath day the day of rest, we should call it the day of communion. It's the day we're supposed to be in communion with God, give ourselves entirely to God. And in order to provide time for that, we must abstain from work. Rest. What was the point of the Sabbath day? It's even seen in the, in the book of Exodus. You might recall when Moses uh, goes to Pharaoh asking to be freed from the Israelites. At one point, Pharaoh actually says, sure, let the Israelites leave, but keep the oxen here. You remember that? And Moses' reply is, that would not be sufficient because we need our oxen so that we can offer worship to God. The point was not just being freed from the slavery in Egypt. It was being freed from slavery so that they could go and worship God in freedom, be in communion with him. It's significant for us to understand this. <clears throat> the Sabbath day is to be our day of communion. You've probably noticed, for example, that I'm kind of a stickler for mass attendance on Sundays. It's precisely because of this. If we're not attending Mass on Sundays, we're completely missing the point of all of the rules of any of our laws. The whole point is communion with God, which we do on the Lord's Day. I'm kind of reminded uh, a few years ago before my, my brother uh, got back into his faith and was confirmed he was away from the church for a long time. And uh, an example that always reminds me of this is that uh, he, would, he wouldn't go to church on Sundays. But every single Friday in Lent, he never ate meat. God forbid he eat meat. Again, he had the ordering reversed. He was missing the point. Who cares if you abstain from meat if you're not going to church, if you're not in communion with God? I think also for us as modern-day Catholics, I think one more practical way this can apply to us, making sure we don't miss the forest for the trees, make sure we're focused on communion and not just the rules and regulations. We're in the midst of election season, and in the midst of elections, obviously there's a lot of very false ideologies that are presented to us. And I do want to caution us a little bit as Catholics. I think sometimes we can focus too much 
on the immorality of the opposing side, and we can make a big deal out of these modern moral issues, and yet not focus enough on our relationship with God. Sometimes our conversations about these things are much more motivated by resentment and frustration than a true love for God and a compassion for our fellow man, wanting them to be healed of these false ideas. Let us not be like the hypocrite, the leader of the synagogue, who was entirely focused on the rules and regulation, but had no charity, had no love for God in his heart. 